So I don't know if you noticed the picture on the front of the bulletin today. It's Jonah. And on one side of the icon, thanks, Bree and Aaron, there it is. On one side of the icon, you get Jonah being spit out onto the shore near Nineveh by the sea monster. Remember Jonah called by God to go preach to the city of Nineveh, a foreign city, a city far away, decides to avoid God's call and gets on a ship going the opposite direction and in doing so jeopardizes, jeopardizes the lives of all of those on the ship because a wind comes up pushing the ship the other direction and Jonah realizes that this is his disobedience, a result of his disobedience and he agrees to be thrown overboard to save the lives of the ship and he gets swallowed up by the sea monster who promptly swims back in the other direction and spits him out on the shore of Nineveh. And so reluctantly Jonah preaches to this city full of sinners, of people who are unjust, who are failing to live and practice the word of God and much to Jonah's disappointment, they repent. The king of Nineveh tells everybody to put on clothes of mourning, to grieve the ways in which their relationships of, with one another have not respected the dignity of each person, the ways in which their relationships of one, with one another has taken advantage of their friends and their neighbors. And Jonah hates it. Jonah is so angry at this because he didn't actually want them to repent. So he literally goes outside of the city, sits on a hill and begins to pout. And God says, why are you angry? And Jonah says, I know you, God. I know that you are a God who is slow to anger, abounding in steadfast love. And you know what, God? That makes me mad. And so he sits and he pouts. And God, because God is slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love, grows up a bush over Jonah to shelter him from the hot sun. And that's what you see on the left. I think there is probably no two more important pieces of scripture than the story of Jonah and the story of the vineyards. Because it says something about who God is. And it says something about our response to that God. It isn't fair. It isn't fair that people who worked all day in the hot sun end up being paid the same as people who worked maybe an hour. It just isn't there. And in this passage, in this story of the vineyard owner, of this landowner, we feel it. Landowners have the right to decide how to pay their people. But the unspoken, or often in our culture, the very loudly spoken rule is that everybody is paid fairly according to your actual work. This is why in our country we hate the idea of people working the system, right? That welfare mom who's gonna work the system to get more money from the government and not actually work hard, that is a legend. It is a myth in our culture. It is such a strong myth that we create entire policies governing our relationships based on the fear and anxiety that somebody is gonna get more than they deserve. Our entire understanding of justice in this country is based on the idea of retribution. If you break the law, you owe. And you're going to pay in a prison system. You're going to pay with your wages being garnished. You're going to pay through fines from the city and the state. Our, everything around us tells us what the rules of fairness are. And they are entirely based on the kind of work we produce, what we do. And that is not the kingdom of heaven. As 
suspect every one of you knows that. As some of us have struggled to find jobs that can actually pay us a daily wage, as some of us have lost our incomes due to health or age or all sorts of other circumstances, we begin to realize the ways in which fairness is actually a kind of tyranny in our lives. We're placing fairness over the needs of people, of what they need to survive day to day. It's a kind of broken world. The reality is it's really hard for us to step out of that. You know, we understand that our friends, maybe the people in this church, we understand that, well, you know, people can't work. And so, yes, they should get their needs met. But, you know, those people, maybe those people who hang out in Dawson Park or currently in our church, those people who hang out across the street, those people, they haven't worked hard enough. They're not nice enough. They don't know how to treat people. And so, of course, they can't hold down a job. And, you know, if they just knew how to treat people better, then it would be fine. Those people, it's not fair that they get it. It's fine if my friends get it. But there's something really beautiful at the end of this passage. Throughout this passage, when Jesus is telling the story, the references to the landowner, right? The landowner, the boss, who has the right to decide the wages offered to laborers. And laborers can decide, well, I don't want to work for you if that's too little. Except when you're desperate, you take whatever's offered because you need something. But landowners have the right to make that decision. But when the laborers complain, to the landowner when they say that's not fair you gave the people who just showed up for an hour who didn't really work particularly hard or particularly long you gave them the same as you gave me and i've been here all day the landowner's response is to say friend friend what's wrong is it really a bad thing that i decided to pay you what we agreed upon, and I decided to pay these other friends, friends, the same. This story is about the abundance of a God who doesn't actually care about our labor, about following the right rules or following the right laws. This is a God who cares about the relationship that God has with us as friends. St. Gregory of Nyssa says that the greatest thing is to be called a friend of God. And in friendships, fairness doesn't play by the same rules. Fairness isn't the thing. In friendships, we seek to care for one another and provide all the things that we need. In friendship, we seek to make sure that our friends get what they need to love and live and care for one another. It isn't about earning or deserving. It's about friendship. And the radical craziness of God is that God is willing to extend that friendship to everybody, even those people that we don't want to be friends of God, much less friends with ourselves. Jonah hates the fact that Nineveh repents, that Nineveh recognizes the ways in which they have perhaps written into law unjust relationships, the way that their business practices hurt one another, the way that they don't welcome one another into their homes. They recognize that. They grieve the ways they have failed to treat one another as friends. And Jonah resents it. 
it's hard to see other people get what you don't think they deserve. But the core of the gospel, the core of the good news of God throughout all of the history of God is that God is slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love, and that God will treat the least, the poorest, the least deserving with the same love and generosity that God treats those of us who have been in the game the whole time. That is the news of a God of liberation, where the priority is not around fairness, but the priority is around abundant generosity to, to ensure that all people have all that they need to live and love and flourish. That is our call. As God calls us friends, whether we have come at the first hour or the 11th hour, early in the morning or five in the early evening, regardless of when we have come, God calls us friends and promises to provide all that we need and invites us to be the kind of people who provide for one another regardless of fairness.